Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. harvest is this a good time to be scouting for a black leg? Uh, it's probably a good idea to actually have been scouting I would say probably starting at the time it's in the rosette stage is when you'd first start to see signs of it uh, or even a little bit earlier you can see symptoms on the on the leaves uh, now we're starting to see symptoms on the stem it's a little bit hard to tell uh, so, but you, you can look for things and go into this next, so we're what, we're the first week of August-ish, you know, so probably the middle of August. Uh, this year is when it's really going to start showing and you're going to start seeing crops lodging and then you're going to go look at what those lodging patches are doing and that's, that's when you'll be able to tell what it is. Um, and then going forward, uh, you can you, you keep doing that right until harvest time or even actually just immediately after swathing, it can show you what to look for. Um, and then in the next year, you can actually look in the off crop year. So you can look for the two year old stubble pieces uh, and find evidence of black leg there. And that is actually maybe the most useful thing to be doing because you can make cropping decisions based on that. Do I have a lot of black leg pressure in this field? or no, no black leg pressure in, in the field and, and all that. So, but now is when it starts to get, the next couple of weeks is when it's going to get really spectacular if it, if it happens to you, yeah. Okay, so what should we be looking for in terms of symptoms? So black leg is, well, from, from a distance on the macro scale, of course, you're going to see patches in the field, sometimes entire sections or whole, you know, part, parts of fields that are lodging over, premature ripening. Unfortunately, that you know, sclerotinia can look like that. Uh, some other problems can look like that. So you're going to go into the into those dead patches, and what you're looking for are lesions, uh, mostly along the base of the plant, sometimes sometimes higher up as well, that will uh, have at maturity they have a have a light colored inside. Uh, tend to be darker on the on the, like an outside ring and little spots on the inside and you need you need a little hand lens for that so uh, just a cheapo uh, lens from from a dollar store or something like that just so you can see that they're actually discrete little uh, spheres and that's important because something like alternaria especially if it's growing on leaves can look a lot like that until you look closer alternaria will look like little clumps of spores like little little fuzzy things as opposed to discrete round spheres. If it's black leg as well, in some circumstances you'll see, uh, like I've got here, some uh, little pink flakes or pinkish discoloration on tops of those uh, on tops of those spheres. That's because the spores come out under humid conditions uh, in a kind of a pink gelatinous mass and that mass will dry and leave a little pinkish to brownish discoloration on that. And if you see that, that's very very clear. Then you're gonna uh, steal this from the garden shed, something like this, which is a you know, just an ordinary uh, rose pruners, secateurs. And to determine if it's black leg, you just cut at the base of the plant, so where the where the tap root meets the meets the main stem, and you just start clipping. And what you'll start to see is some is discoloration on the inside. Um, and that discoloration will be a, will be a blackish color, and that is very indicative uh, of black leg. Um, a lot of times, people think black leg is sclerotinia, and the best way to tell if if uh, a plant is infected with sclerotinia, particularly if you don't have sclerotia, those are little black bodies that form on the inside, is to take the stem. So here's a here's a canola stem that's been infected with with uh, sclerotinia. First of all, it has a whitish color. Black like can sometimes look light like that, and I can see right now that it's it's starting to fray a little bit. And if I were to take this and kind of twist it, you see how it's it's breaking down into these fibers. And that is very characteristic of, of, of sclerotinia. And that's because the sclerotinia fungus, sclerotinia sclerotiorum, uh, preferentially digests the, um, the, the lignans and the hemicellulases. In other words, it's kind of like, con uh, you know, if you have, imagine a concrete wall, there's concrete in there and there's rebar in there. So it digests the concrete and leaves the rebar. And the rebar is the, is the cellulose, so those are those fibers that, that we see here. But do that test. So the thing is, to just, is just to twist it uh, or to, you know, just to, just to break a bit roughly and you know, break up into, into, those, into those fibers. 
Uh, that's that's black leg diagnostics 101. <laughs> to diagnose black leg, um, even in the absence of crop. So let's say you're in, in a wheat field. What you do is you look for the little pieces of that kind of look like driftwood. And what this is is the the bottom part of the stem and the top part of a taproot and this is at least two years old so it's not no longer green it's 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 dead dry hard but what's happening inside this is that um, after this was harvested as a plant and fell to the ground is the black leg fungus continues to grow through this and it looks for uh, uh, other fungus of the of the opposite mating type so a male female kind of thing and it will form uh, after that, after that second year, so so it's been lying there at least one year. It goes through a second year. It forms pseudothesia. These are these are uh, the, the sexual spore stage. They're the result of recombination, and that's evidence in a field if they're present that uh, that fungus has been shuffling its genes, and they're quite ineffective as well, uh, and can be transported. Uh, you know, most of them fall within meters, but many go within within miles as well. So if I have a field and I'm and I, and I go around and I pick up 20 of these, let's say, and and 15 of them have have pseudothesia on them, uh, which are the, uh, the, uh, the spore-bearing structures, you can feel them by just running your, your fingers over top of them. It's that crust of in there. You really could use a hand lens for this, but they're distinct spherical black bodies. Um, and they don't they don't come off very easily. You know, it looks a bit like dirt, but if you rub it like that, a you can feel it. You can almost hear this one, and they don't they don't come off very easily. And so those will produce ascospores and infect you know whatever whatever victim plants it's had. Here's another group of them. So this, uh, if you have 15 or so of, of those of those stubble pieces, you know that there's quite a bit of black like disease pressure in that field and let's say you're on the verge of well do I put peas in or or what you know that that might that might make your decision go one way or the other and you know that it's also probably a really bad idea in that field to be putting that same variety in you know do not put this variety back into that field because you know it's 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 uh, it's consuming that that particular variety so once you know what you're looking for, it's not, it's not that hard. It just means you have to get out there before there's much crop cover and, and you can find these things.